What's up guys, Woody here, back with another Myth Guard video, and finally, it's another deck video. Apologies, it's been so long since my last deck video. It's just a case of, uh, I was ill last week, so I didn't I didn't stream or do any content last week. Um, and I was kind of trying to get into a, a format, or what do you want to call it, like a routine. Um, and yeah, so, the, I mean, the deck videos, I tried to get one every, probably about week, 10 days, but hey ho, like, life gets nice sometimes, so I'm sorry. But they haven't been um, as regular as they were beforehand. But anyway, we're back with a new one. Now, this colour combination isn't uh, anything new. I mean, Mythgard's been out long enough now that um, the, the new stuff is not going to be as regular as it was. I could bring you decks before and say, look guys, try this, it's new. People are starting to try their own stuff now, which is great, okay? Um, but this this was inspired by Noah, actually. Noah from um, Team Rankstar who is uh, an absolute hero of, of a content creator, absolute hero of a person, and a very good Mythgard player, sent me a list a little while ago, which is an orange-purple mid-range list. And uh, you guys probably know by now, I'm a big fan of mid-range. I just like decks that can kind of versatile, non-combo-heavy decks that kind of play around with stuff. That's that's what I like, and that's what pretty much mid-range is. So I sat down and was playing, and I was like, Do you know what, I'm going to try and make a budget version of this list. So as we do in these deck videos, we have a budget version, and we have an optimized version, a cheap version, and an expensive version. The joy now is uh, both deck lists are linked below to the Mythgod Hub. So you guys can head straight to Mythgod Hub now, download these decks, or import these decks, and play around with them straight away now. Slight change. So the way these work, work guys, in case it's the first time I've seen the, these videos, we have the budget deck, and then we play an AI game. We play a game against AI. Um, or could you play a game against casual, actually? Let's go and play a casual game um, with the budget list. And then we play the optimized deck and we take it onto ladder and play a ranked game with that. So the slight change we have here though, guys, is we have, uh, I used to do no mythics in the budget lists, but I'm now, because there's, because basically the way they, they, they put out these treat codes, lots of people have been given the opportunity to get at least one or two mythics now for each color. Uh, and because that's the case, even if someone's brand spanking new, I'm going to start including one mythic into the budget decks because, but the, the the mythic I'll include will be a universal mythic. It won't be like a very niche mythic that only works in this one deck. It'll be one that's a, that I'd recommend you crafting anyway. So, enough of the whole mumbo jumbo spiel stuff out of the way. Last point, you just want to jump to the optimized deck, guys. If you want to just go, cool, just show me the optimized deck. Just show me how how the the, the expensive version works. The timestamps in the description. Jump to that part of the video and hey hi, there you go. You can, you can watch the optimized version. But anyway, OP budget, because orange, purple, um, mid-range budget list, okay? I'll go through the cards, I'll go through different ones using the cards, and then we'll uh, jump into some gameplay. So, we're running one conviction. We're running four eager recruit, really important cards. Okay, your one drops, you get them out, puts another minion in your hand. Two dark passage. This allows our one ones or our two ones to become removals against anything as long as long as it hasn't got armor that's going to negate the damage but this allows they've got a 5-5 five, five on the board i can just swing a one like a pass recruit one one against it by putting the dark passage on it i remove that minion and i get to draw a card i get onto drawing cards after i've gone through list guys okay ghoul is such an underrated card ghoul um basically you can banish a boneyard banish a minion from any boneyard and fully heal so let's say you trade into a 2-2 two, two. ghoul's now a 2-1 you can then Spend one mana to banish a minion from their graveyard uh, or boneyard and fully heal. That comes great against reanimate decks, naturally. It comes very good against anyone running Journey of Souls. You can start dictating. You're now controlling what cards are going back to the hand. It's huge. It's really, really good. Um, Xerion Recruit, one of the best two drops in the card in the game. The only time this gets annoying is when you end up finding a spell. So you play this card, you then draw a card. But if it's a spell, you get to see it. it's a spell and you know you're drawing it next turn. Serendipity I free. Um, this card, some people will avoid playing this card because it has, uh, when you draw a card, lose one life. You play this card, like, on turn three, on the curve, uh, you, you're not, you shouldn't be worried about the one, the one life. you got to think about it as well. If you're running turn of seasons, every four turns you're gaining one life back, so over the course of four turns you're actually only losing three life, so it's not that bad. Um, Perry at the Gates, guys, 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 I, I'm going to, I'm going to say this every time I include this card. This is the best rare in the game, there's no denying, Okay. Perry at the Gates is the best rare in the game. If you don't own two copies of it, just go craft it. Just go craft it right now, okay? Use your wild cards. Make Perry at the Gates. It's, it's, it is the best 
the best rare in the game. I'm going to put my neck out and say it, okay? You play this card, it's a 2-2, you draw a card, you then look at the top two cards in your deck, and you draw another card. It's insane. Playing it on curve gives you card advantage, gives, gives you setup for late, mid to late game. It's just, it's just so, so good. Now we're going to move on to our first myth, or our only mythic, Scoring a Pride. One of the best mythics in the game, again. Okay, um, Scoring a Pride, I'll come back to exactly what's one of the best mythics in, the, um, in a minute, but it's, it's just an incredibly good card. Seal of Exile. The... I say one of the best spot removals in the game. It is definitely one of the best spot removals in the game. You, you do sacrifice mana playing it. Playing this on curve turn four isn't the best time to play it. But if you feel like it's the best time to play it, if you feel like you need to get rid of set threats on the board, then definitely it's the time to drop it. But this banishes minions. Meaning by banishing, it means it goes through warded, whatever. It pulls all minions from their hand, their deck, the, the same. So you banish one. I don't know, you banish one Simzu and everyone in their deck or hand just disappears from the game. Can't get it back. It's really good. Temptation's amazing. Steal a card, five five mana or less, swing at them. Um, now remember, if you don't if that minion you've stole doesn't die or isn't ephemeral, it will go back to the hand. And it's pretty much gonna be a free play or a one drop play next turn, okay? Um, and then Cataphract. Cataphract isn't the best card. <sighs> I played around with a few cards to make this budget. I put Califract in there because it, it is a, a common card. It's super cheap. People will have them. It's not the best, but for a mid to late game push, it's not the worst. It's a 5-5. Five, five. It has overrun. It's focus 1, meaning if you're attacking the lane in front, it does 1 additional damage. So you can effectively, if you're trading into a 2-2, two, two, you're removing a 2-2 two, two, and you're doing 4 face damage, which is pretty, is pretty good. Um... Okay, moving on to purples. Simzuan. This guy here is mostly here to keep our big units alive. Keep our Cataphracts alive. Keep our Tarragons alive. Keep our Bakus alive. Okay. Simzuan comes out, puts a healing potion in your hand, which allows you to, throw, to heal free health to any minion. Imper Impenetrive Bell. Guys, I slept on this card for way too long. I was like, this card's not that good. Nah, this card's not that good. I started playing this card and was like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, this card is really good. Um, yeah, the card the card is good, and it's good to learn how to play play with. Basically, you choose a minion. Uh, it, it can be an opponent's minion. It can be your minion, any minion. Okay, if that minion dies during your opponent's turn, you sacrifice this card as the artifact. Okay, you then get to draw a card and you gain two temporary mana. You don't have to play a card straight away. You can play a card if you want. Okay, you can play a card straight away then. Uh, which means it won't have summoning sickness when it comes back to be in your turn. Or you can hold on to the two temporary mana until you can burn another card and then effectively have a big card like mana advantage against your opponent for one turn, allowing you to play ahead of curve for one turn. It's a very good card. It's only one um, purple gem, so you can get it out on turn two. And it can it can be huge. Playing this turn two, um, in Penetrative Bell turn two, can mean basically on turn, let's say on turn three, potentially, you can be playing five mana cards. Like a five mana card on turn two. It's crazy good. Okay. Uh, respawn, another card I slept on. Give a minion demise. Return to play in the same lane and give it ephemeral. Okay. I slept on this for too long. Basically, let's say you pop respawn on Terragon. Okay. And then Terragon gets removed. Terragon just pops back into your back into play. And have a guess what? The awaken ability still pops. So you still get another pearl item, uh, adamant pearl in your hand. The card still appears. It's just now ephemeral. It's it's such a good card. Respawn is so good. Okay, definitely recommend um, playing it more in purple if you aren't already. Uh, Near Gangnam. Near Gangnam is a um, enchantment. Uh, Occupy Mina has one one and warded. Shinobi Smoke. Uh, you could you could if you really wanted to play Shinobi Wind. I prefer Shinobi Smoke. It's a little bit more controlly, in my opinion. You can play this on curve, as in on turn three, and then they're playing their free drops like me with the Swift, and then the no retaliate, no retaliatory damage. It, it can be really good at removing their their cards. Balance is a funny one, and I'm fluctuating between taking this out of the deck. But when I have got balance off at times, I've been I've drawn I've, I've drew five cards off this card. It's it, so yeah, it's it is a funny one. With Parry at the Gates and Xerion Recruit, you're normally pretty good at keeping cards in your hand anyway. Um, but Balance is in there, just a little bit of another safety net, okay? Um, Pentacle of Flavor is one of my favorite cards in the game, hands down. Um, it can be crazy good. You put this on something with Agile, you put this on 
You put this on um, Shinobi of Smoke with the Swift, it can do the blast damage, it can re regen itself as Slayer against other minions. Without the retaliatory damage, it makes it insane. It's, it's a very, very good card. Two Terragons, they're, they're kind of our mid to late game push with purple. And then our final big game end play uh, with purple is Baku Bogeyman, okay? Um, so when you play this card, you must discard a card. Your opponent discards a card. Minions in the opposing three lanes are suppressed. Little side note on that, guys. If you have a healing potion in hand from Zinzuin, you can discard healing potion if you don't want to discard any of your other cards. Now, quickly go back to scoring a pride. For those who are here for the budget list, why is this card so important? It is, hands down, one of the best orange mythics straight up. Like, you'll play this in almost any orange deck you play. Now, it has overrun. It's a 4-4. When, when you play it, you allow you put a pride of play spell in your hand. What's a pride of play spell? It turns any minion into a 4-4 spirit lion. Now, this is immune to damage from spirits. Oh, we look over here. Angel spell, okay. Oh, sorry, spirit lion means it can't take damage. So they've got a 9-9 nine, nine opposite or on the board. You drop down Scorn of Pride. You turn it into a 4-4 four, four line that now cannot damage Scorn of Pride. Scorn of Pride swings into it. It can remove the line. Flip side of that. You have got your one of your 1-1 one, one power uh, recruits over here on the board. What you can easily do is you can turn one of those into... You can play Scorn of Pride on turn like with 5 mana. Use the extra mana to play Spirit Line onto your 1-1. One, one, turn it into a 4-4. Four, four, swing the 4-4 four, four to the face. It's it's just it's a versatile card. It can be control heavy. It can be aggro heavy. It can be just... It can be good. It's just a very, very good card, okay? And that's the budget list, guys. Uh, link is in the description below if you want to check it out. Let's jump over to a casual game and see how this deck runs. Okay, so we have a match up, people. Uh, so we are in casual ranked here, ca casual play here. So what we normally do is I don't cherry pick games for those who didn't know. Um, we are... So we're playing someone silver ranked. Um, yeah, we don't cherry pick games. This is more of a... Just to talk through my ideas how the deck's running and then, and how the sequence of playing and what we do with the deck. Um, I, the reason I don't cherry pick games is if we lose, we lose. It's just so you, I don't want to show the deck off in like all its full glory and cherry pick one game where it's amazing because we all know, we all play card games. Decks don't always work like that, guys. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, right, let's go into that. Enough of the mumbo jumbo chatting about. We've got a lot of not great, I mean, yeah, not a great card here. Alright, uh, we're going to burn one of the Eager Recruits. I'm going to drop an Eager Recruit. I'm going to play Eager Recruit in lane 5. As uh, that now means if I play lane 2 and lane 7, I'm covering the whole board efficiently with three cards. Now you can say, well, why don't I play lane 1? Why don't I play lane 4, four and lane 7? Well, that also then means that lane 7 and lane 1 only have two lanes to attack. You're limiting your attacking options while... Moving over one each, you, um, you're you not limiting them as much. So we're going to burn a balance. We are now going to throw out a Simzuin. And then uh, we're going to throw you. And you as well. And swing you to the face. There we go. Okay, so we've got some, some stuff developing now. Not Nothing too exciting or snazzy or flashy developing. But we, we've got some cards... Coming through for us now, starting to set up for us. Now, we may play in Pen Penetrate Bell next, depending what they start developing. Uh, so, they're also playing Orange uh, Purple. So, my assumption here is they're going to trade into probably the 2 1. Well, we're going to trade a 2 1 into them, actually. So, the 1 1 might be where they, they trade into. I Meaning we can put in Penetrate Bell on that. So we can now burn Baku. Baku's our like turn seven play. We don't need Baku yet. Uh, we can then get Bell out. We can then stick Bell on this. We can trade into there. We can play a Sim Zuin here. Right. Let's swing to the face. Nina, now if they if they damage, uh, if I remove if they remove our one one this turn, we get two we get to draw a card, and we get two uh, temporary mana next turn, so we can get Terragon out Terragon out basically uh, on turn four. So we're playing ahead of curve straight away, which is pretty nice. I mean, we could even depending where they play, uh, we could get Pentacle of Favors out. I don't think we need to. 
I feel like uh, Terragon's a pretty good pentacle uh, target. So, Card of Burning Next is going to be Balance. Um, it, balance draws a card for every one of your opponent's minions. They have one minion at the moment. Let's say they, they develop another two. Well, we're getting three cards off of it. It's not bad for four mana. Four mana, three cards is good. Um, but I don't know if it's the, 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 the card we want here. Okay, so they must have enchantments in hand. Oh, they did burn an enchantment. There you go. They must have enchantments in hand. The size of their hand has to be down to... I mean, they haven't played cards yet apart from one. But also, they... they. So if you don't know what this path does, there you go. They draw the top enchantment. from If, the, if, they're, if their top card is enchantment at the end of their turn, they get to draw it. Okay, so we aren't playing ahead at the moment. Um, we're going to play Perry. Yes, so we're actually going to burn Eager Recruit here to match out our gems. And then we're going to drop Perry at the gates. Now, this would be a really bad play if I was playing red. The reason it would be a really bad play if I was playing red would purely be because a card exists called Magmatar. Uh, meaning that, so this is, when you create an honor, add a 3 2 and such you had. So I think we can leave that this turn. Um, that's fine. We can remove it. Um, we can swing to the face. So yeah, um, Magmatar would have come out then and remove, remove both these cards straight up. So, if I was playing red, I'd be more cautious about playing three cards in a row next to each other. Uh, but the reason I didn't play Perry here is I want to force their I3 into removing this, giving us the bonus uh, or the additional temporary mana. Okay, so they can't play this in here to get the ability because they need to play a non-ephemeral uh, minion. And this is ephemeral, so... It's bonus there. But chip damage is going off with, with this anyway. They're, they're taking one damage every time they, they draw cards. Uh, if they draw additional cards because the enchantments, then they're taking two damage per turn, which again is only going to aid us. So Terragon is definitely, well, I say definitely. Terragon's pretty much definitely coming out next turn. Uh, then we're probably going to use Respawn. Okay, that's not a bad play with them. You may play a card. Uh, do you know what? We don't want to play a card. No, because it means we can play Baku Bogeyman out next turn as well. So we now get the two. So you can see now we've got four mana here. So we've got a temporary mana at six. Uh, and then as soon as we burn a card. So for example, we're going to burn balance. We're now at seven. Which now means we can actually play Baku Bogeyman. Opposite. Uh, unsuppressible. I mean, both are now suppressed. Um, yeah. And we are going to discard one of the healing potions. And we are forcing them to discard. Which means next turn. Okay. Fire Spirit Gate. Uh, means next turn now. We can, if we want to. Play Terragon, or what we probably will do is play Terragon and then put the Adamant Pearl on Baku so uh, we have the overrun ability. Okay, this is going to remove. So straight up trade up um, Baku. Which is fine, they just lost Pentacle of Flavors and traded that card into Baku. We didn't play, we played Baku ahead of Curve anyway, so we're not worried about that one bit. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's an absolutely fine play. We're very happy with that. We've just made them get rid of uh, Pentacle of Flavors. Um, I three it's done more than enough work for us. They didn't get a single swing to the face with it because the one one block, uh, and he done four chip damage for us over time. So 
I3 has put a shift in for us there, guys. Uh, we can only say thank you to the serendipity I3 on that there. So they burn a card here, they're down to four cards with, a not, with one ephemeral in a hand. Meaning they only have three targets to play on here. My bet is they still have enchantments in hand as well. Um, there you go. Okay. This is a really good play now as well, actually. Um, we're going to burn it because you recruit. I know this is... People will be like, what? Why are you doing this, man? Um, just, just so we can get this out. And we don't need to play this one yet in case they have a way of bumping this back to hand, removing it. We, we lose the item. It can't swing now, so, we, so why would we play the, the pearl on it? There is literally zero point playing the pearl on that card right now. It makes no, no difference doing it now or doing it in the future. Okay, we're in a good position here. We're up by 12 on, on health points. Uh, if they play a card here, it does actually uh, gain immortal immortality, shall we say. That's not the end of the world. We have Impel, um, which is fine. That's cool. We are fine with that. Yes, we are. Okay, so... Uh, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to impel this over one. Mm -hmm. We are going to burn the Simzuan. We're going to play Adamant Pearl on this. We're going to put Pentacle on this. We're going to trade through here, do six damage to the face, and remove that with the blast damage, and end turn. We put this on there next as well with the focused. Uh, I say this one. We only play this for the. Oh, it's already just over. Actually, so there's no point playing this on there. I'm gonna get the life tap, which is all I can say is it's cute. Okay, so playing wide to stay away from us, and they don't really, they don't really have the health to be doing that. No, which is interesting. That's a rebel. That's a dragon. Just checking because this doesn't take damage from spirits. Always check the cards to see if they're spirits. Uh, so we can trade this into here. It's always a nice little trade. We can play this scorn of pride here. That into a 4 4 lion. Um, we can then burn conviction and get Shinobi of Smoke out over here. And now there's pretty much 99% sure we've set up Lethal Bear somewhere. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, no, they're going to temptation that against us. That's a good play by them. A very good play by them. It doesn't stop the fact that they have a very small hand. It doesn't stop the fact that now we can play two Terragons next turn uh, while removing their this lion. They're still burning cards. So they have one card in hand. They can't play it here to get another card in hand. They can play it here to get Immortality, which they didn't. Uh, okay, so we're going to drop this one here. We're going to drop this one here. And we're going to drop this one over here. Hey there. So let's just draw another card as well. Let me just trade that into there. And then, I mean, I'm 99.99% sure, guys, we have lethal somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have free overrun on this. Two damage here, three overrun on this is five. This has two overrun, that's seven. Any overrun from this, we win. I mean, they still have four mana, potentially five mana. They have three cards in hand, to pair at the gates. Yeah. 
yeah, that I'm afraid people, I'm pretty sure is game. We can put one on here, another one on here, swing to the face and swing to the face. There we go. And then we say GG. That was a good game. Good game. They were playing Orange Pub as well. They're a little bit more enchantment focused. Um, I'm, there's nothing wrong with playing enchantment focused decks. I don't, I just think at the moment that's just too slow in my opinion to be up there like to be competitive with with what other decks are offering but um hey yeah, they're, they're i mean they they're fine they are absolutely fine enchantment focused decks um but yeah All right let's jump back over to the optimized deck okay guys so this is the fully optimized deck now i realized i didn't do this last time but i'm gonna whack this little button here so now you can see the mana curve for the for the deck okay now this deck was uh, sent to me by noah or the initial iteration of it the original deck was sent to me by Noah, again, who's fellow TRS teammate. And this, I've made some changes. I've made some adjustments to it to how I want to how I want to play the deck. Um, I've made two two change, well, three cards. I've changed out just to make it, in my opinion, more less controlly, more kind of mid rangey, slightly aggro, but more just mid range rather than control mid range. But anyway, uh, we fly through the cards. I won't go through what I do because the optimized one is. A little more kind of um, not as tutorial based, uh, and then we're getting some games. So we're still running one conviction. We're still running uh, four eager recruits. Still running two dark passage. Still running two ghouls. Still running two exerium recruiter. Still running three i three. Still running two parrot gates. Still running scorn of pride. Still running two seal of exiles. Still running two temptations. Now this is where it gets expensive. This deck has seven mythics in it, guys. Okay, it is not a cheap deck. This has two heaven and back, okay? This card is insanely good. It's one of the reasons why Orange is so good at keeping heart cards in the hand. When an occupying non-angel minion dies, return it to the owner's hand. It is now an angel, it gets 1-1 one, one, and agile, and its mana cost is reduced by two. So for example, let's say that Perry at the Gates was on um, to heaven and back, and it died. Perry at the Gates now is coming up to my hand, it's now a two drop card, still need the two orange gems, uh, but it's a free free with agile. So I play it, I still get the awaken ability, still get to get the, all the card stats off. I can then now use the agile on it and it's a free free. However, it's an angel. So do not play the next card back on to heaven and back. Really important to know guys, it's not an ephemeral angel. It doesn't come back as ephemeral, okay? This card doesn't come back as ephemeral. So Parrot at the Gates isn't all of a sudden ephemeral. It's insane. It's crazy how good to heaven and back is, okay? Um, Kashil the Unforgiving. This card can be swapped out for other cards. This is one of my favorite orange mythics. I don't know why. I think I just got attached to the card for no reason. But uh, Slayer 2, so it does 2 extra damage when attacking a minion. Uh, gets another action after killing a minion in combat. It's a 5, uh, 10, okay? So let's say, for example, you've got uh, a 2-1 and a 2-2-1 two, two blocking you in front. You can swing at 1-2-1. One, You'll go down to 8 health, still set at 5. You can swing the other 2-1, you'll go down to 6 health, step 5. And then you can swing again at face. Uh, this card is great for clearing lanes in front of you and getting some damage to the face. It's great at clearing three or two or three lanes to then set up swings from adjacent minions. It's, it's just a very good card. Uh, and I'm going to ask you guys to really like the artwork a bit. But anyway, um, side note. La Lavish Proxy is a bit of a... People call it a trolly meme card. It's just a very good card. Six drop card. Regen two, which is crazy good. Your life cannot be reduced by one while this card is in play. That honestly means, guys, you cannot die. Okay, there's no way around this. This here, your life cannot be reduced below one. It can't ignition it. If you got serendipity i fruit on the board, it can't tick below one. They can't damage you below one. They can't swing at you to do more. Than that. If this card's on the board. It, you don't die. Four damage, nine health. It's not easy to get rid of, okay? Especially when you play it on a Neo Gangnam. You throw it on a Neo Gangnam, it's now a 10 5 with warded, so it can't get removed uh, without combat damage. It's it's a very, very good card, and it's a very good control style card. It's one of the only, well, one of the only kind of control style cards I have. Armageddon Angel is also quite control. Quite control, very control. And Armageddon Angel is kind of the spice of this deck. It's just a little spice that you just throw in there just to kind of... You can either use it as board removal. You can use it... Well, it's always used as board removal, but you can use it to set up some pretty big 
plays, okay? So, Armageddon Angel people, destroy all other minions. It's created with one more strength for each of your minions that you kill and one less health for each of your opponent minions. So let's say they've got six minions on the board. It's only going to come out of one health, but you kill two of your minions, it's going to come out of 9-1. Ideally, let's say they've got three minions on the board. Three to four minions, that is ideal, and you've got maybe two minions on the board. That means you're going to come out at nine, and this is going to come out at anywhere between a three and a four. That is a 9-4. It is nuts. They have to deal with it. If they don't deal with it, this thing can get crazy, okay? Throw a Conviction on there as well, so it's getting Slayer free and Overrun. You're potentially doing 12 damage to the face, so they've got a Chump 1-1 one, one blocker in front of you. It's crazy, it's nuts. Um, and it removes boards. Side note, to remember, if, like, and this happened to me a couple of games back, a couple of days back, Lavish Proxy, I played it on Neo Gangnam. Neo Gangnam is warded, uh, Occupy Minion has 1-1. One, one. Armageddon Angel says the keyword, destroy. Because Lavish Proxy was on Neo Gangnam and was warded, it didn't destroy the card. So I couldn't get killed anyway. They had some minions that were really putting pressure on Lavish Proxy. I dropped Armageddon Angel, removed all their minions, removed all my minions, apart from Lavish Proxy, who's warded, and could go from that. It was nuts. It's crazy that that can happen, but hey, that is a combo, guys. And it's a very, very good combo. Moving on to purples, pretty much as they were until we get to the Mythics. Simzuan, exactly the same. Respawn, the same. Misfortune, an incredibly good incredibly good mythic for purple guys given any minion fragile free if that minion dies you deal two damage to the, the your opponent and then you return this card to your hand it doesn't go up mana cost it just comes back, back to your hand play on another minion so let's say they've got a, um, a seven seven on the board okay getting rid of a seven seven is pretty hard throw this on it you now only need to do four damage to that minion to remove it, it being a seven health and you do two damage to the face and you get the card back to do it again to another minion it's crazy crazy good uh, next mythic, oh sorry, Neo Gangnam was in there before. We only run one in this version. We don't run the the two. It's the only card that we have one of. All the other cards are the same because the only things we replaced were the premiums. Uh, sorry, were the mythics. Um, Rogue uh, Idol Idolin. Rogue Idolin used to be called Rogue Vocaloid. Uh, it's changed now to Rogue Idolin. Now Vocaloid, um, sorry, Rogue Idolin is an incredibly good card again. So you play this opposite of minion, it locks their strength, being their, their, their power, their damage output, to zero. Uh, and then it has blast free. So you can swing at minion, you're only doing one damage, but adjacent minions to the minion you're swinging at, take three damage each. It's a very good control like card, it can really shut down big units. Um, and I just, I, just, I just like it a lot, I'm not going to lie. If they've got an enchantment that they're going to keep throwing stuff onto, uh, put this there, it can never go back. Look, let's say they throw a red carnival on the board. Put Rogue uh, Idol on opposite it. No matter how many minions die, that that is never getting the two two is only going to go up in its health. It's never going to go up in its damage output while the whole time it's on Red Carnival. So Rogue Idol on is a very very good card. Okay. Shinobi Smoke same as before. Balance same as before. This could be changed out if you wanted to. Pentacle of Flavors only one again. Only one Terragon. And rather than our Baku, we're running Jin Suk Dolmaster. Now this card could be swapped out. Could, you could stick with Baku if you wanted. Um, I've, I've fluctuated with this card. I've taken it out. I've put it back in. I've taken it out. i put it back in. Two charges. It's a lurker. Um, you gain a charge by giving a minion 2-2. Two, two. Now, if that minus 2, minus 2 means the health goes down to 0, then the card dies. It doesn't stay on the board at 0 health. It just dies. So it can be good removal, especially against aggro, if you can last this long to get these cards out. Because uh, you're removing that's like a lot of the, the smaller, tokeny minions. Uh, you can spend two to shift a player's minions far left or far right as possible. This is great for setting up lethal. You can shift them all across and you can get two swings to the face of your minions. It's just, just very good. And then you are branded with return a minion to its owner's hand. I've only got this off once. It basically means you as a player are branded. You can then just click down. There's like a little symbol comes up next to your profile picture. You click on that. Any minion, any opponent minion on the board... Or even your minion, just bump back to hand. So you can throw it back. Again, it can set up lethal. This is a kind of setup for your finisher card, not necessarily your finisher in a card. Uh, but anyway, that is the deck, guys. Um, we're going to jump into some ranked gameplay now. So we're going to jump into some gold two. I think gold two. Gold two or gold three. I can't remember now. Gold two or gold three ranked gameplay uh, and see how the deck runs on ranked. Okay, guys, we've got a match against Ned. Uh, I think I've played Ned before. I think Ned's, uh, yeah, they're similar, similar standard to us. Gold 4. Um, okay, so 
Open hand is looking pretty good here. We've got a one drop, so we haven't got a two drop yet. Armageddon Angel is a big one there. Uh, obviously, the risk being, you burn Armageddon Angel, uh, then what well, if I don't get it back? But I'm not playing her for seven turns, so I have no way of playing her ahead of curve in this version of the deck. We're not running Impen Impenetrable Bell. Um, so we're going to burn Armageddon Angel to be able to play Eager Recruit. When he wants to play Eager Recruit, and end turn. Oh, I disconnected for a second. I should apologise, I have been having some issues with my internet tonight, guys. So if we get boot, boot from the game all of a sudden, then hey-ho. Also, I should switch the camera back. There you go. Uh, now you can see my, my life title. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've been playing this deck quite a lot recently on ladder, and I've been really enjoying it, and that's why I wanted to kind of show off the... Not show off, but you know what I mean. Show off the... Showcase the orange-purple combination. Because uh, honestly, I think it's a really nice combination to play around with. It's very versatile. It can play around. It can it can do a lot, um, and uh, and yeah, it's 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 very good at keeping cards in your hand. And that's one thing I'm learning with this game is keeping cards in your hand is pretty important. So they're playing purple. Are they playing because they're running Journey of Souls? Is it purple mono purple, or is it purple red aggro? That's the question, people, isn't it? That is the million dollar question that we all want to know. Hey, eh? hey. Eh? Okay, so we're gonna, I'm going to burn Tarragon and hope we find an orange next to play Parrot of Gates. I'm going to drop the I3 over here. Uh, there are no oranges that we're drawing, so we're not drawing orange next, which is a little bit devastating for us because we really don't want to burn Scorn of Pride, but we really want to play Parrot of the Gates. So we're going to get the Simzu in. Mm, oh, wait, no, we're not. We're going to get the Shinobi. Because that's going to be our play next turn. And we're going to trade this into this. Yeah, not drawing the orange there is really, really important for us. Because parry on curve. Could see. I mean, they're dead out of five cards. These are items, obviously. So. We drew two cards as well. And we still didn't find an orange. Okay, we're going to take a risk. We're going to burn Scorion. And we're going to drop Perry. Uh, to draw the cards. Pentacle, and we will take this as the burn option potentially next turn. Sort of hand out a little bit. They're a little bit all over the place here. There we go. Uh, swing forward to the face, and we will end turn there. The chance of this, I believe, will probably be Shinobi of Smoke. Oh, Shinobi of Wind. Okay, so they don't get a breach damage. Jungle advice. Okay, so it's blue, orange that they're playing. Okay, we're going to burn this. We're then going to drop Tarragon. They have the impel to be out, so they can get the the movement if they want. Okay, so they're starting to. Get low on their hand now. Okay, so this is going to trade into this now. They just wasted an item. That's an ephemeral, so it's not going to go towards their souls. This is going to trade up here. This is going to take three damage from this. So it's going to help to go to half. We do have a healing potion in hand, uh, which is always nice. Okay, so they're going to teleport over here to get the damage. And that makes sense because they're going to still do the free damage to, to Terragon. Okay. That's fine. Okay, so what we're actually going to do here is we're going to... They're not getting anything back here. This is a complete waste. Well, they'll get one of these back. Okay, what do we want to do here? That's the question. What actually do we want to do here? I think we just put pressure on the on the on the face, you know. So we're gonna put this here. We're gonna heal it. And we're gonna put the adamant pearl on it to get the overrun. 
So do nine damage to the face. It's going to heal back up. And we're going to burn smoke. I'm going to end turn. Now they've got to be super careful with what they do here. We put, we put a lot of pressure on them here. Uh, this is going to do one damage now to this. This is almost useless now here. They haven't got a card here now. They're not going to get a card back of souls. Anything that comes here with the overrun, sick damage. We can put misfortune on it, so we only need to get four overrun off this. The fact that it has a um, focus of two is kind of crazy. Oh, there you go. We, we've won the game. <laughs> it's as easy as that. It's not always as easy as that, but that's kind of how how the game game worked. It was a good game. It was it was a good game. That was nice, simple, easy, quick one. But the biggest thing with with purple and orange that I can talk about that I I've noticed with with the deck is it's so good at keeping cards in hand, and that's for Exir and Recruit, or more importantly, for the best rare in the game, in my opinion, Perry at the Gates. Perry at the Gates. Playing Perry at the Gates on turn four, having the ability to play Perry at the Gates on turn four, then it played out perfect for us. Yeah, we, born, we burnt Scoring of Pride, which isn't the ideal card we want to be burning. However, then opening up the opportunity to play the Terragon, and then, again, we could have played defensively, but we didn't. We went aggressive. By going aggressive, and that's what this deck does well, it's, it's versatile. I can be controlly and defensive if I want to be. And I could have played the Terragon over to block the Shinobi win, but then they could just impel it and teleport anywhere else. And I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. We're taking two damage to the face and then two damage off, off the the breach ability. So if we throw Pentacle of Flavors on the Terragon, now we're only taking one damage off the breach ability, and we're getting the overrun damage there as well. They haven't got anything in the graveyards to really make Junkyard Valhalla scary. They they haven't got like the souls are not getting cards back. So all that meant that I could play aggressive, and this deck allowed me to play aggressive. Like I said, it could have been defensive or controlly. It's a very good deck. I really really enjoy playing it. Uh, any changes you make, guys, let me know in the comments below because I love to know your thoughts on these deck guides. Uh, also, if you like the video, guys, then give it a thumbs up. Anything you want to see, any color combinations you want to see, let me know in the comments below. I'm working now on orange green and i'm having some good success and good fun with that it's going to be my tournament deck that i'm taking to moonlight masquerade now moonlight masquerade is an upcoming tournament that is a host or that is brought to you by 98.3 media uh in association with team rank star um inked gaming op seats and um it's it's a the first kind of not it's not the first Mythgard tournament, but it's a Mythgard tournament happening at the end of this month. It's got dev support, there's cash prizes available. If you guys are interested in that, link is in the description below for M Moonlight Masquerade. But anyway, guys, enough from me. Have a great day, morning, evening, whatever it is where you guys are. Have, have a great one, guys. Until next time, uh, goodbye.